Psalm 79. A Psalm of Asaph. Here we go with Asaph again. Is he the Asaph, the old of David's time, or is he a later Asaph? Well, the Asaph of David's time, we were told, was a, was a prophet. Again, we're looking at the destruction of Jerusalem again. Either or. Oh God. Trouble, problems. Oh God. The heathen are come. That would be the Babylonians. The nation. And throughout the course of, of Judah's history that we read in the Bible, many have come into Jerusalem. And the main reason is sin. You know what you know what is destroying England today? You know where our King James Bible came from? Sin. You know what's destroying America today? Sin. You know what destroyed Germany? Sin. It's not God. It's not the wages of God is death. It's the wages of sin. And God is attacking Jerusalem because of their sins. And we read it outright in the Old Testament. Idolatry. Kill, taking their, their children and giving them to Molech. Imagery. Queen of Heaven, Astrid, Estar, Easter. I'm looking at a study right now doing and doing about Tammuz. And it made God jealous and it made God angry. And when you make God angry, you're in for some serious consequences. The loving God, that God is love, is, only, is also a holy and righteous God. And when you go against the holy and righteous loving God, prepare to be get wrath. And if you are a child of God, prepare to be getting chastised. Hebrews chapter 12 or 13. So the cry, whether this is in the late Asaph or the Asaph, the prophet, the cry is when God comes and says, hey, pay up. Pay up for your, for your sin. Wages of sin. And the only one thing a man can cry is, oh God. And when a man faces Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment, the only response he's going to have is, Jesus is Lord. As Jesus tells him, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, sin. I never knew you. The heathen are come into thy inheritance, the land of Israel, land of Judah, in Jerusalem, into the temple. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They weren't supposed to go in there. Only the Levites of Aaron were to do the service. Only the Levites of Aaron were to go into the holy place. And only the high priest of Aaron was to go into the most holy place. And if it's the Babylonian count, the final third stage, is, but when they destroyed Jerusalem, everything that's in the most holy place, except for the ark, everything that's in the holy place, everything's been carried to Babylon. The ark was transported to heaven. You don't see that in the Revelation. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. Total destruction. And it's also, well, how could Asaph know something like that? How could Jesus Christ know that Jerusalem would be sacked in 70 AD? How are all the prophecies in the Bible known? And if it is the, the prophet Asaph of David's time, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The dead bodies... Of thy servants. Thy servants? Is that? You mean the ones, if it's the Babylonian captivity, you mean the ones that were baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven? 
You mean the ones that were burning their children to, uh, to Molech? You mean the ones that were offering sacrifices and incense in the groves and the high hills? You mean the ones that had contemporary Judean music? <laughs> you mean the ones that brought the Christmas tree into the temple? Brought the false altars into the temple? That brought the world into the temple? You mean those servants? Well, it's in the time of Jeremiah, God could only find three men. The Ethiopian eunuch, uh, I forget what his name was. Jeremiah and Baruch. That's it. In the time of Noah, you can only have eight people. The time of Lot, you had four and one turn around and, and turn to, to Saul. My servants have they given to be the meat of the fowls of the heaven. They didn't even bury, we're going to see. And the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. So Asaph is implying that there were righteous people when the city of Jerusalem was sacked. Saints. That's not someone who's lost. That's not someone who's gone against God. And this pictures Armageddon. The, all the enemies of God, their bodies are lying out dead in the field. And, the, and God calls out and says, listen, I got a great feast for you. I got a great meal. Come and dine. The master's call is come and dine. Their blood, Jewish blood, have they shed like water round about Jerusalem. I don't know how close to literal you can take that passage. I mean, granted, true fact, much blood was spilled. I have never seen a massacre. I have never seen a war. I have never seen where much blood has been shed. And there was none to bury them. And for a Jewish person, that's that's of importance. Burial. It was to be a Jewish curse to be left out in the field. It'd be a, 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 it'd be terrible if your body would not be brought home to be buried. We are become a reproach to our neighbors. And God said it in the law. And God said it often to the king. I'm going to make you a byword. I'm going to make you a proverb. I'm going to make you a scorning. And they're going to walk by the city. And you're going to say, why did that God do that? Because of their sins and their wickedness. When Jeremiah was taken out of prison by Babylon, they, they, they took Jeremiah out. And the, and the captain of the guard told him, it's because of the sin of the people that this has happened. And our neighbors know how we're supposed to live. And they know when we don't live right. You're not fooling them. A scorn and derision to them that are round about us. And they're taking part in the ecumenical movement of the Canaanites and the Hittites and all the seven nations and other nations of Edom and Moab and Assyria. They have come in with all their gods. They had married their children who God said don't marry. Solomon included. And now when it comes that God is paying them back for their sin, those that they had intermarried, those that they had inter mingled with those who have taken part they're looking at <laughs> sucker and that's the devil when he gets a child of God and when we get in trouble with God he sits back and says, <laughs> got it
The devil knows what we're supposed to be doing. The world knows what we're supposed to be doing. And the moment you do right, 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 they don't care. But the moment you do wrong, and there they are. I had a time at I work at one night. No, well, we worked at night. And we're down to loading docks. And I, I forget the whole situation, but I, I, I blurted it out. And I said, this sucks. And my assistant manager looked at me and goes, what did you say? I said, this sucks. I mean, whatever it was. And he had his mouth, because they knew what kind of Christian I was. And now these are people who use four-lettered words. And they cussed. And they look at me like, you said suck? Whoa, that's not supposed to be coming out of your mouth. And it should not have. Not in anger. Yet it stood a testimony against me and my living. They knew what I'm supposed to do. They know where I'm supposed to go. They know where I'm not supposed to go. They know what I'm supposed to do. And they know what I'm not supposed to do. And they're watching for you to do the not. They don't care about the good. See, when I preach at the farmer's market, they know they know the Bible tells me to do it. They don't care about that. They're waiting for that moment I get angry and someone that scorns me. They're waiting for that, mo that moment to blow my top. They're waiting for that moment to lose my cool. Then they got me. Never mind the, the five other years that I've been pe pre preaching the gospel. That one time, we got them. That's what's happening here. How long, Lord? Well, until you repent and get right. And then even after you repent and get right, you're still going to have a little carryover. You realize Israel did not get right until they were in Babylon and Daniel gets up and starts praying for the nation. And even Daniel, you can only find four people in the in the, in the book of Daniel that got right. Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, and Daniel. To be a saint of God and serving God and doing right with God is a minority. How long? Well, until you learn your lesson, which Israel, Judah did not ever do. And they still not learned their lesson. And any moment now, and we don't know when, Jesus Christ is coming for his church, and Israel is going to have seven more years of tribulation, three and a half years of the last part, the great tribulation. At least at that point, if they look at the scriptures and know the scriptures, they can have a date. But can they? You say, well, what are you talking about? Well, it says seven years. Times, time, and half a time. Three and a half years. But Jesus said, for the very elect's sake, time is going to be shortened. Or they wouldn't survive it. How long? Until you get right. Seriously right. You don't repent just because you got caught. That's called worldly tears. And Paul tells the Corinthians, there, there is godly sorrow that bringeth about repentance tears. And then there's the sorrow of the world. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, is it over with? Okay. <laughs> I got away with it. And if you ever want to see those tears, go in your, in your state. Find out where you can go to a trial, a criminal trial. And be allowed to sit in the seats and watch a trial. And I'm talking about a trial where, where there's many people that day. Many people come in and go and stand before the judge. And you're going to see a lot of tears that don't mean nothing. And meet those people out in the foyer or out in the hall somewhere and see if they're still crying. How long will thou be angry? Forever? Well, no, that's a little stretching it out. But when you're getting chastised by God, it seems like forever. And we know for Israel that God's going to give them the new earth. There'll be the new Jerusalem and the new heaven. Well, not forever, but it'll seem like it. Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Yeah, the whole city is destroyed. 
Our gods are consuming fire. Why? Because you have another god besides me. You look at a picture of an Italian Jesus and think it's me. I don't like that. You watch Hollywood movies with an American Jesus. Uh, that, that gets me upset, God says. You are committing adultery with the devil and with the world. And God's like, I love you. You're supposed to love me. He tells the priest in Malachi, if I'm your father, where's my honor? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen. He will. Babylon will get sacked overnight. Adolf Hitler ended up burning himself to death. I think it was his girlfriend or something. God got him. God destroyed the whole Nazis. When you mess with Israel, God said, pass it through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will curse them that curse you. And those that go through the tribulation period and curse the Jews, they end up as the goat nation. They go off into, like, they go off into hell that burns forever. Those that bless Israel and take care of Israel, they're the sheep nations. They get to go in the millennium. And it's sorry for the fact is, if you are any ruler of any nation, past, present, or future, and God ever calls you on the door, says, knocks on your door, yes, yes, Lord, I got a job for you. Okay, Lord, I want you to do something to my people, the Jew. Sorry, Lord. Your Bible and the history of those Jewish people, anybody who messed with those Jews, uh-uh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'll do anything else, Lord, but I ain't going to mess with that Jew. If you're any ruler of any nation, and God calls you like he called Nebuchadnezzar, and he called in Syria, and he called the Moabites, and the book of Judges, he calls all these nations to come in. He calls the, the Pharisees, I mean, not the, uh, the, 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 the Philistines. If you become a leader of a nation, king, president, ruler, prime, whatever it is, and God calls you and says, I want you to go take care of my Jew, my Jew. If it's for bad, say, no, Lord, cursing, absolutely not. The King James Bible says, I'm not going to curse him. Now, you want me to bless him? I'll bless him. Because you will curse those Jews, you will get a cursing back. Don't worry about the heathen. They'll get their just desserts. You need not to worry about the heathen right now. You need to worry about your own Jewish butt. And you need to get right with Jehovah. you got to get right with God. Because he's got you on his tail end right now. Upon the heathen that have not known thee. That's a mouthful. Asaph? Yes, sir. The heathen that don't know you? Know you? Yes, sir. Asaph? Yeah, I know your God. I know a lot of Jews who don't know your God today. I thank the Lord there are Jews who do know Jesus as their Savior. Praise the Lord. But there are many Jews who don't. Worldwide, heathen, Asaph, they know God as Jesus Christ. They are saved. Their names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they're saints. Did not Naaman come to know God? Did not Babel, uh, uh, not Babel, did not Nebuchadnezzar get right with God? I believe he did. As soon as he had that animalistic thing that God told him, and he got right, and he praised God, he fell off the Bible, and you didn't hear about him anymore. I think he's going to be in heaven. Did not Pharaoh listen to Joseph about God? Did he not say, you got the spirit of the gods in you? I'm going to make you ruler, and whatever you say, whatever God says, I'm going to do. Has there not been the queen of Sheba that came and was, was mystified by all that God had done for Solomon? There were heathen that came to the temple, and they got right, and they came to be knowing God, Jehovah, through the Jewish people. But right now, he's looking at the very fact, there are more heathen and destroying us. They're a tool of God, and God will get them. You need to worry about your own butt. And upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. But God doesn't know that. 
You know what Asaph's doing? Whether it has happened or it's prophecy. What do you say, Adam? She did it. Saul, what do you say? Well, my men made me do it. It's the blame game. He just said that God's angry with him. So what is his response? God, go get the heathen. No, wrong response. Daniel, get down, uh, open up your window towards Jerusalem, get down your knees, Lord, we, we, we have sinned against you. When, when all the ministries out there in the world, whether they go knocking on your door, they preach on your street, they hand you a gospel tag in the bathroom, or they open a Bible with you in the lunch period room, the, the, the respect that you're to have to God is say, what must I do to be saved? That was the Philippian jailer. Well, you know, I know a Christian. Well, I know a pastor ran off of the pit. I know one too. Well, you know, I got my... Re That's not the response. For they have devoured Jacob, Israel. And laid waste his dwelling place. I think God knows that. And God has done it because you sinned against him. You need to get right. You need to repent. Imagine, I don't know what the great white throne judge is going to be, but I know one thing. I know one thing about the great white throne judge. There's no more time. Time stops before the great white throne judge. And it's in Revelation. I don't know if there are people with a great white throne judge and say, well, you know, my boyfriend didn't let me walk the aisle. We were in church and I want, and he told me to just behave and, we'll, you know, we'll go get a Coca-Cola and some french fries after. You don't need to go do that. You know, my father beat us and he wouldn't permit us to go to church. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's not, the, that's not the thing. There are enough today Bible-believing people accurate correct people on the internet that you can hear back in the old days before he got sour billy graham was an excellent evangelist of the world so he started romancing with the president but there was a time that he was right and you were you could have got saved through the billy graham ministry and people are still living that remember billy graham in his youngness before he started romancing the government and and the politics and the media but he was a good preacher you can't blame somebody else well you know i sat in the church and it was all the pastors fault. got out of it go online and i'm uh, looking for a king james only independent fundamentalist baptist church oh i gotta go 25 30 miles i do i'd love to start a work here in daytona beach we already tried one and didn't work out maybe later lord willing i don't know but you may have to go 25 miles would you not go 50 miles if your favorite band was playing at the coliseum and the rock group or something would you not go 60 miles because your famous baseball team is going to play at this stadium? Would you not travel by aircraft to go to your romantic beach or whatever mountain resort? You're going to pay $199 for an airline ticket and you're going to complain about a 25-mile trip to church. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, remember not against us former iniquity. <laughs> I don't know if that is a repentance. <laughs> but the present situation is Israel's getting their butt smacked for their iniquity. Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us. For we are brought very low. I, 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 that's, that's, I don't know if that's repentance. Or as we're getting our butt kicked, God. Can you like uh, not remember? 
That may be say this prayer and you're not saved. That may be the crocodile to you. Oh, Lord, you know, it hurts. Ow's. What do you got to say about it? Ow. Stop it. What about repentance? So that's a. I don't really know about verse 8. Is that. I'm going to put a question. I'm going to put a question mark there. Because you know what? I don't know if that's repentance. There we go. I'm going to put a question mark there. I don't know what their heart is. God does. Maybe it is. Maybe he's if he's saying it from his heart, and it's repentance. If he's saying it from his butt, that ain't repentance. You mean from his butt. You get chastised by God. God, stop it because it hurts. That, that ain't repentance. God, I have sinned against you, and I deserve more. That's not what he's saying. Lord, I deserve hell. By your mercy, please, Lord, save it. He's not crying out salvation. Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Well, you expect God to lift you up on high when you're sinning? Modern churches do. That's what we call the prosperity gospel. It has no repentance and has no blood, and God just loves everybody. Is that is that man in that pulpit visiting you in coronavirus when you're shut up in your house? Help us. Okay, that sounds good. What kind of help? Now I have been I have been said, and I had people complain against me oh, a lot, stand in line, but when I'm dealing with people, I, I, people don't necessarily get saved when I deal with them. And you say, why not? Because I want to make sure it's for real. I'd rather walk away from that guy not being saved, but under conviction, rather have that guy get saved without conviction. Listen, if, if I gave him, and I've had people get saved. Plenty of people, have, God has allowed me to use me for them to get saved it's not that i never had anybody get saved to me but i am i'm very lenient because i want to make sure you know what you're doing know who you are and what you are before you ask god anything because i would hate to have you end up at the great white throne judgment well i you know he had me say this prayer but you didn't mean it I'd rather have God deal with you afterwards, and then you truly get right with God, and I, I partake. I'm, I'm lenient. Oh God, there's that old God again, of our salvation. God, you're the one that saved us. But you're not saving us now. He's not saying God save us, he says our salvation. Remember, you're the God that called us out of Egypt. And I, I remember this last chapter that we did in two parts, 78. I remember all the times you sinned against me and went against me and the iniquities you did against me. Yeah, I saved you out of Egypt. But I had to devour you with fire. I had to have the earth open up. I had to kill you guys in the wilderness. I'm your salvation. But you're in your iniquity. Jesus Christ is the salvation today. Yes, he is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know how many people today are going to go into hell knowing that Jesus is the salvation? You know how many people that are living today, that are alive? And I'll say 20 years old and up. You know how many of those people have heard somehow, some way, the biblical gospel and how to be saved through Jesus and have not done it? God is their salvation, but they never chose to receive it. And they'll die and go in hell. For the glory of thy name. What about Asherah? What about Baal? 
What about Balaam? What about the Queen of Heaven? What about Tamu? What about the fallen God names you've been... And when it comes to King, uh, King Solomon, God tells it with the name of that God and where that God came from. And we're sure it wasn't named God Jehovah. The glory of thy name, you're shaming the name of God. Look at verse 4. We have become a reproach of our neighbors. Why? Because you have turned against the holy, righteous God, and they know it. I know heathen oh, who have talked about a Christian they know that gets drunk and smokes and, and crowds and all that. And they know, I already told you, they know what we're not supposed to do. And deliver us. Okay, there it is. And purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Again, that, that sounds like a little, just say, it hurts, Lord, and stop it, and I'll do what it will take. And that's one thing hard about salvation and witnessing to people. Is it for real? And we don't know if a person truly got saved. I've known many people out of many churches gone to the altar, sat at the pew, in their house, wherever it's been, and we have heard they called upon Jesus Christ. And you never see them again. Were they saved? I don't know. Now, according to James, with faith and works, if I don't see the new creature in you, if I have to deal with you, I'll deal with you as a lost man. I know somebody who thought that their family was saved, and this later on, they say, oh, you know what, I really think you're right. I don't think they're saved. Yeah. They don't act like it. Salvation comes with a new creature. So is that a true repentance? I don't know what the heart condition is. Wherefore, should the heathen say, where is their God? Where is their God? Where is Jehovah? I'll tell you where Jehovah is. Let your gods take care of you. Go ahead. Call on Asherah. You got her number? Because she's disconnected. Call Baal. Text Baal. His number's been disconnected. Oh, you're calling me now? Takes the phone and puts it off the hook for a while. I'm not listening. You know what he told Jeremiah? He says, don't you even pray for him. I'm not listening. You know what he told Samuel about King Saul? Stop it. Stop the prayers. I'm not listening to it. Where's God? He's in heaven. The Bible says that Paul writes about, about the Lord's Supper. If you mistreat that Lord's Supper and you have no regard for that Lord's Supper, there are some Christians who are very sick. God, I'm sick. I'm, I don't want to hear it. You didn't care about me. You didn't want to remember me. You didn't want to confess your sin. And you want to partake in something that was special for the church. I don't want to hear it. Or he'll take your life. God's in the same place where he is. Where did you move? Where did you go? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight. Oh, you mean the... You mean the Babylonian gods that are right there in Jerusalem that they can recognize. That as Babylon is destroying Jerusalem, hey, look, that's our God. Yeah. I thought they're not supposed to have our God here. There it is.
And the heathen are going to look at that and say, that's not, that God does not belong with you. That's why the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. By revenging of the blood of thy servants, which is shed. Well, kind of hard because God ordered them to do it. And in the book of Revelation, the angel cries out when God gives the water turned to blood. And the angels and, and the saints say that, that uh, they've been behaved, beheaded. Lord God, you avenged us of our blood by giving them the blood to drink. And the thing comes down to, don't mess with Israel. You'll be in deep trouble. And whatever blood has been shed by Israel, I mean, of Israel, you're going to pay for it, Galatians 6, 7. You're going to reap. Because I told you, don't touch that Jew. I told you, if you curse him, I will curse you. Let the sign of the prisoner come before thee. Is that Jeremiah? It is singular. And it don't say Jeremiah. What do you do with that verse? One prisoner. He's been talking about the whole nation of Israel. Thy people, thy people. The prisoner. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And they're dying left and right. Jeremiah was going to die, but God protected him. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach wherein would they have reproached thee, O Lord God. Uh, don't you remember the law said, if you go against me seven times more for the sin, and then he goes to the same chapter seven more times against your sin, and if you still will not, you're going to get seven more times for your sin, and if you still don't do it, you're going to get seven times more for your sin, and he closes that chapter off, if you repent and get right, I'll take you back. Will you get off the heathen? Will you get off the heathen sins and get into your sins and repent and get right so God can bless you? In the great passage of Israel. So we, thy people, yes they are, and sheep of thy pasture, yes they are, will give thee thanks forever, millennium. They're not thanking God today. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. And they're not doing that today. So here's destruction by and the cause of sin. 